Welcome in, Scott Beeson, Yellowhammer Radio, starting off the second half. Today is Monday, the seventh day of November in the year of our Lord, 2016. Tomorrow is Decision Day, D-Day. No offense to the people with the real D-Day, but D-Day. The direction of the country is at stake, one way or another. And I am personally very concerned that there are too many blue states, states that have already gone over the edge, states that there is no coming back, states that are willing to go the way of Venezuela before they turn back to smaller government traditional values and the things that our founding fathers believed in when they gave us this great country. But in Alabama, we still have important things to deal with here. We still have to mind our house, mind our own business, and create the as good a state as we can possibly create just in case the rest of it falls apart. Maybe we have a chance to survive. I have Senator Clay Schofield on the phone. Senator Schofield, how are you, brother? I'm doing well, my old friend. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Hadn't talked to you in a while, and uh, you are out with your with your own constitutional amendment that's going to be on the ballot tomorrow, I understand, amendment number two. Yes, sir. Dealing with the state parks. So tell me a little bit about what you got going on, Senator Clay Schofield, my brother. Well, been too long, my friend. We need to keep in touch longer. I know me and you have both been really busy. Uh, I, I have been... sworn off all you politicians now that I'm a an honest citizen. Yeah, whatever. You're still a politician, <laughs> Scott. God, I know you do well. Hateful, hateful talk. Hey, what's your? You know, I mean, come on. I don't know, long. Clay. Do you buy the fact that he tries to call himself a reformed I'm, politician? I'm I'm on step fourteen of the fifteen step process. <laughs> well, at least you know you, you still got to get over the denial there, that, partner. <laughs> that's right. So tell me about this amendment two you got going on. Well, Amendment 2 is a, is a, a very important amendment. Everybody remembers, uh, you know, last year when uh, the governor was talking about closing down some of the parks due to the funding crisis. Uh, amendment 2 is a direct uh, result of that in, in making sure that our parks are going to be uh, fiscally stable and financially stable uh, for years and years to come. And Amendment 2, if, if passed, uh, I believe it will it will do just that. The amendment does two things. First and foremost, it will keep the legislature from transferring uh, any of the money uh, away from the park system, but it does have a fifty million dollar cap. So there's some people who are, um, you know, not real happy with 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 the earmark. This is going to be different than any other earmark, and that it is capped. Um, also, the other point on that is. The parks are a different type of state agency in that they actually make money for the state. You remember very well, mm -hmm. Scott, that whenever we would appropriate money to uh, certain agencies, what would they do with it? They'd spend it. That's right. They'd spend it. The parks make money. And so the problem has been that because they make money, it's been ripe pickings to transfer that money out from anywhere else. And then, and then the parks are not left with the capability to reinvest, and then we get 20 years down the road, and everybody says, hey, the parks are falling in because we spent all the reinvestment money on other projects. That's right. And what does that do? That only drives up and prolongs the cost. The cost is still going to be there, but because we don't maintain it, it's only going to go up. And so that's the argument I've been trying to make with this is you have to understand really um, how the, the parks operate and, and, and what they, why they operate. The other part has been a little more controversial, um, and it's, it's really uh, unwarranted because there's been some mistruths spread about it. Okay. Um, there, essentially what it does is levels the playing field so that all the parks can offer concessionaires. Most parks already are allowing concessionaires, but a 1998 bond issue uh, forbids uh, any of the parks that use that bond money to enter into concessionaires. This is not privatization, as some have claimed. Privatization would be that the state is going to sell off the parks. Amendment 2 does not, let me repeat, does not 
allow for privatization or or selling off Alabama State Parks. Not only would Senator, I not when you be, say wait wait Senator when you say concessionaires, explain to the listeners what you're talking about. You know, what a concessionaire is is for instance, we now have an attraction at Lake Gunnersville State Park that's a zip line attraction. Okay. Now for us conservatives like like Clay Schofield and Scott Beeson, this is about as good a deal as you can ask for. We now have a zip line attraction at Lake Gunnersville State Park, but guess what? The state didn't put up any money. The state assumes very little liability, but the state gets a percentage of the profit off of it. So what's that doing? That is another attraction that is available for the customers. It's bringing more people in to Lake Gunnersville State Park, increasing revenues. And by the way, a lot of those people are coming from outside the state of Alabama. Right. So, so, so what I'm trying to explain to people is, is this is a way, if we can invest in our state parks, if we can pass Amendment 2 and allow uh, investment in our state parks, we can increase revenues in this state and not raise a dime's worth of tax. That's a good question. Hey, Steve, my producer, has a question for you, Senator. Uh, and I kind of want to build off of that because I, I guess there's just confusion in the wording there because this part that you're talking about, this one that seems to be causing this confusion, it's talking about the, and I want to make sure I get it right, so f- provides for the operation and management of non-state entities, hotels, golf courses, restaurants of any applicable state parks. So we're not talking about selling off the hotels. We're just talking about allowing a private entity to manage it? That is exactly correct. That is exactly correct. A lot of the people that are, that are misconstruing this information are actually throwing this stuff out um, are not being truthful to the people of Alabama. This Amendment 2 in no way, shape, or form allows privatization. You mean, not you only mean, you mean selling off the for... property. We can't get rid of the property. But if somebody wanted to, say you had the greatest company ever at running a golf course, and they wanted to pay the state something to be able to run the golf course that's already there, is that the kind of situation you're talking about? That's exactly right. Now, this is where we get into good business management. Okay. If, this, if, if a company approaches the state, and by the way, if the state does uh, enter into concessionaires, it has to go through a competitive bid process. There's, there's no good old boy here. The competitive bid process. Oh, well, you still, clearly slipped up on that, Senator. No, well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I'm you know, I'm looking out for the people of Alabama and our go. farm system. See, not, was... not, 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 uh, not good old boys out there. But they will have to submit uh, uh, proposals to the park system to run that, that golf course. If it's not a good business plan, uh, the state's not going to take them up on it. If the state is making more money on what they could make, uh, through that concessionaire, they're not going to take take them up on it. However, if the state is losing money on that and they're looking to close that, then if someone comes forward that wants to operate it, they can do so. So I would rather I would rather instead of them closing that down, that a concessionaire run it. A great example of this right now is Roland Cooper State Park. With all that went on with closing the parks, Roland Cooper State Park was one of the five state parks that closed down in Alabama. But guess what? Now it is open and operated by a concessionaire, and it is working perfectly. And the local people there are continuing to see uh, an economic impact there and are, are able to enjoy their park without it being closed. That's a good point. And it's like everything. I, as long as we have honest people overseeing these things, it won't be abused by a good old boy network. And and sometimes you have to do what's right, and sometimes you have to trust people to do the right thing. Let me ask you the final question because we're going to have to go to a break in just a second. What do you think happens if Amendment 2 does not pass? I, I think, you, well, there's no question. I mean, we're going to continue to see park facilities in decline. We're going to continue to... 
uh, see the park system have to make very difficult choices that they do not want to make in in closing uh, some of these parks, some of these attractions that the people of Alabama enjoy that have an economic impact. Let me throw this number out, out at you. The state park system, essentially, this money we're talking about equals about $38 million a year. Do you know what the annual economic impact of Alabama state parks have on the state of Alabama per year? No, tell us. $375 million. So let's review that. So for $38 million that we're investing in our parks, we're re- realizing a $375 million economic impact. Half of those people that come and visit our parks come from out of state. So that is new money being infused into our economy without raising a dime's worth of taxes. No, absolutely. Tourism is one of those things. That is like free money for the state. You and I both know where a little state park is that I wish made more tourism dollars. But we'll talk about that another another day. Steve's yeah. got another question for uh, you. Senator Schofield, when it comes to dealing with the state parks, can you only do this through constitutional amendments, or is there anything that the legislature could do outside of doing any constitutional amendments regarding state parks? Well, you know, I have to stop transferring money out, you know, and but 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 again, this amendment will 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 prevent that from happening in the future because the problem is is you really have to understand how the park system works and we go back to the fact that the park system unlike other state agencies uh take money or excuse me they make money so it is ripe for the pickings because they're looking at it saying well here's some money that's you know uh being being uh being generated being created here let's pull that and put it in something now they have to have the constitutional amendment to keep the legislators from passing budget items that would take the money from the state parks. Yeah. It's the only way to keep the legislators from continuing to dip into that trough. And I have been there when, after so many years of dipping in, they come along and, and say, hey, we need to do a bond issue, which means you and I have to pay the interest right. and all that kind of stuff because they didn't keep up the facility. It's the same thing for school buildings, et cetera, et cetera. Governments are lousy at maintaining their facilities because they know sometime in the future they can hit the taxpayers for a new one. Right. Well, I guess I guess the thing that kind of brought up the question here was because you had mentioned what if the state votes no on this. Right. That kind of made me wonder what, if anything, the Alabama legislature could do. I don't know whether you happen to know this, Senator Schofield, but do you by any chance know what the voting uh, rate was as far as the support for putting this up on the ballot? Uh, as far as the legislature? Yes. It was almost unanimous, and it was bipartisan, both both uh, both uh, Republican and Democrat. So it had it had widespread support. Um, but uh, you know, so hopefully the support is growing in the legislature for the parks, and I believe it is, and I believe that's a testament to the people of Alabama who spoke up and said, you know, we support our parks, but but if we can get Amendment Two on the ballot, we can we can be assured that our parks are going to be in. Uh, better financial shape for uh, for for decades to come. Hey, good point, Senator. I appreciate the call, brother. Thanks for well, letting us know about Amendment Two. Absolutely. Thank y'all for for having me, and uh, I just urge uh, urge everyone to vote yes on Amendment Two tomorrow, and let's make Alabama State Parks great again. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> That's the See way to wrap later. it up, right? How do you argue with that? Let's take a break. I don't know how you can. (laughs) This is Yellowhammer Radio.